You're listening to Epic Footnote Productions. Go to Linktree slash Epic Footnote for links to all of our streaming platforms, YouTube channel, social media pages, and merch site. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Epic Footnote. Hey, everyone. What's going on? It's If You Have to Pick Three. It's Matt. And it's Zach. I get a top three list. Zach gets a top three list. We talk about a final top three list. And this time, if you've been with us for any significant amount of time on the channel, at least a year, because we do this every year, there's one very special day that comes up every year. It's almost like, I would say, Christmas in April. We get it two times a year now. Let's just call it what it is. It's Record Store Day 2024. And we are going to be breaking down what we believe to be the best three albums or things that you can pick up at Record Store Day. It's the most wonderful time for audiophiles ding dong scratching on vinyl that's right it's the time of year where all the indie record stores get a little extra love whatever oh this is i'm sorry i don't mean to be a jerk here but all the whatever record stores are remaining out there i say that because one of our favorites closed down a few years ago and we're still a little hurt and sad about it but it's the one time that indie record stores get a little love and artists just come out of the woodworks and do some really special things, special releases, special stuff, period, to really give vinyl and these indie stores some love. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, Matt, the last few years, and we've t- touched on this a little bit, the last few years are a little lackluster. Yeah, a little. That came out. This year, without kind of revealing too much of my uh, picks, this year, it, it feels like there, you know, there's some actual titles that make me go, huh. I really got, want to get my hands on that one. There's some interesting things going on this year. Again, without re- yeah, going too deep into my list yet. And maybe this is like the first real year that we're seeing a bounce back from COVID. And I hate to still be thinking about that, but mm, you know, maybe there maybe there was some kind of carryover. And for a while there, you know, people try to just get by instead of having to worry about packaging up new things or worrying about going into the studio and remastering things, you know, even though it might be the easy way out, but I don't know. It just, it just felt like we were just getting by with record store day over the last couple of years. And again, without going revealing too much, it definitely feels like a little, like it's not just the normal to your point, normal releases. It's like we're finally getting something that goes, Oh wow, this is actually different. This is something that's exclusive. Not just, I don't know. It's, you know, without going to without revealing too much more, Matt, go ahead, share your for your picks, your three coolest releases of Record Store Day 2024. All right. So the first one that I'm going to call out here is something that's been done before, but I think it's you know it's always sold out by the time I get there because hell, I'm not waking up early enough and going to stand online. Uh, it's Holy. always gone. Uh, yeah, that's me. I just like sleep too much. Sorry. But it is the little three-inch turntables that they always put out. Somebody has one every year. And this year, uh, it is the Beatles. And they're releasing a limited edition uh, little turntable featuring Beatles-branded dust cover (coughs) and a a turntable facing. If you're thinking, well, what the hell am I going to do with a three-inch turntable? Each one of them is Bluetooth-enabled and housed in a Beatles box that includes three-inch records of four songs that they performed 60 years ago oh. on the Ed Sullivan show. Oh, I want to hold hurts. your hand till there was you. She loves you. And I saw her standing there. Now, each one of those records is housed in an outer box with a picture sleeve and a poster. Also in there is there's going to be some uh, Beatles branded carrying case, which holds up to 10 three inch records. So like I said, people do this every year. So it's pretty cool. If you haven't picked up one in the past and you're a Beatles fan, maybe this is something you're going to go out and uh, go get. It definitely is a collector's item and something just unique that you're only going to be able to get on record store day. So that's number one. Number two is actually something that I'm surprised that I was like, Hmm, maybe this is something I want to get because you figure back in 2007, when they put this cover album out, a two-volume cover album out, that Tesla, not the car, the band, uh, that they would have put this out on vinyl because it's called Real to Real. And if you don't know much about this album, it is essentially, it was two volumes, 
and they did all cover albums in a live studio session and it came out sounding amazing and they do a really good job of a lot of different covers like they do bad company alice cooper there's some peter frampton in here some zz top um black sabbath there's a ton of stuff that they they're just all over the board one of the most famous ones they do is uh covers is thank you from led zeppelin and you would think that you know what Tesla's not like a really known band. How good could this actually be, right? Are they just trying to gain some popularity over covers? Well, maybe, but they're well done covers. So if you've never heard of Tesla, check it out. And if you are a fan of covers, you need to check this out too. And I bet it's going to sound really good because it's on vinyl for the first time. And that's going to be kind of where I'm going with my third pick here. And I'm going to steal from the Zach bag of tricks on this third one. What pray tell is that? That would be because it is not just one record. This is a bunch of records that I'm packaging up and calling it the nineties on vinyl for the first time. Hold, hold up. Are you talking about <laughs> different? Is this like yes. the same band, but like no. different? It's like the same series. No, the, hold up. That's B, uh, BS. <laughs> I don't, they're all oh, tied. I don't, they're all no. tied. <laughs> how, how many? No. How yes. many albums are we talking about here? Five. No. <laughs> I'd never go that far into five tied for third space. No, no, no. I am putting my foot okay. down here. I will let you pick two. Because, yes, two. I've definitely done ties. But I've never gone beyond just one or two albums for a tie. Okay, fine. You can you but, have you get to two, choose two '90s albums that have never been released on vinyl. Only two. All right, fine. Well, Jerk. it's hard to believe that there have been some albums that have not been released on vinyl ever. And one of the bands that I feel is kind of notorious for not being on vinyl, and I could always imagine that they would sound incredible on vinyl is Collective Soul. And they're releasing the Dosage album for the very first time. So I'm very much so looking forward to trying to pick that up. And since Zach is making me choose another one just to tie, I'm going to go with, of course, the brand new album from Pearl Jam, Dark Matter, that is releasing on Record Store Day. So there you have it. Those are <laughs> my three albums that i'm uh, three things that i'm looking forward to picking you mean, up you mean four albums you mean four well it was going to be about eight but you yes. cut it back uh, and listen i'll give you a chance to do honorary mentions after i go with my picks but you fine but, yes fine out of curiosity between collective soul and the new pearl jam album which you would you have picked as the third slot if i forced you to do only one if you made me if you had to force me to do one um i would have to say collective soul okay because I don't know what the new Pearl Jam sounds like, but I know how good dosage sounds. But maybe in a few weeks after you hear this episode for the first time, come back and hear our review of Pearl Jam's new album, Dark Matter, on any streaming platform go. you can imagine. All right, Zach, what do you got? Now he's so, going to come back. Oh, I've got five things tied for number No, three, I have two. no ties. <laughs> no ties. I only picked three. And I actually want to preface this because normally I am a sucker for color vinyl or weird shapes i'm a sucker for the the what's the word the packaging and all the accoutrement and but this year a sucker for good marketing yeah pretty much but this year a little different in that i'm more interested in three titles that are you know lead to interesting collaborations and the first one i want to talk about is from what they're calling CBI, a.k.a. Grohl, Benate, Ian. Now, a little history, backstory here. If you recall, and actually if you follow us on TikTok or any of the social media platforms, we've actually posted about this. But last year, uh, Anthrax had posted photos of Dave Grohl visiting them in the studio while they were recording their new album and Grohl just jamming and playing drums. Well, it turns out that actually led 
to more than just a hangout. Charlie Benante actually reached out to the girl going, hey, awesome vis- seeing you and thanks for visiting. Any chance you want to just come in and jam with Scott Ian and I? And long story short, Dave said, let's jam on the on the Bad Brain song, The Regulator. And I'll play drums. Charlie will play bass. Uh, and also, I'm sorry, Dave also on vocals. And Scott Ian will play guitar. And as a result, we have these three insane musicians doing a Bad Brains cover on vinyl, The Regulator. But what makes this even cooler, as if that wasn't cool enough, this one-off supergroup, as if that wasn't cool enough, the proceeds for this release are going to go to HR, the singer from Bad Brains, his health care. HR has had a lot of health issues over the years. And, you know, understandably, the expenses have gotten the best of him because it's not like Bad Brains are a huge, massive selling artist. And these and the proceeds from this release are going to actually go to benefit him and his health. So that's an amazing thing. It's a, buying this really cool piece of music history for a great cause. So GBI, Girl Benante Ian, and their cover of The Regulator. That's my first pick. The second pick. This is a different type of collaboration in that it's actually two artists covering each other's songs. And this one is really interesting because I've always said, and we've talked about this when we reviewed Paramore's last album, This Is Why. Their album before that, After Laughter, I always said was really Paramore trying to be the talking heads or to pay tribute to them in a sense. Well, earlier this year, Paramore released their cover of Burning Down the House for a Talking Heads tribute album. I had a lot of big names contribute covers for them. So for this, the record store day, as they are the ambassadors, what's actually really cool is while they're doing a 12-inch vinyl that has on one side their cover of Burning Down the House, the classic Talking Heads song, the other side actually has a cover from David Byrne himself covering Hard Times, the song that literally sounds like a a Paramore trying to be Talking Heads. And it's almost kind of confirms, oh, yeah, nope, this is a Talking Heads song just done by Haley Williams. Like, it's just kind of amazing that David Byrne would even just do this for fun. Uh, And it's just a a special thing for both Talking Head fans as well as Paramore fans. These two artists kind of paying tribute to each other. And it's only being limited to like a thousand prints. Like, it's going to be kind of hard to get. So, second pick, Burning Down a House, Flash. Hard Times by David Byrne and Paramore. And continuing in that theme of artists covering each other's songs, my third pick is in a little bit more of a more modern, new era part. Matt, I'm not entirely sure even if you know these two artists. I'm sure you know one of them, of course. But I feel like one of the... We talked about Taylor Swift a lot. Uh, We did a whole What If episode about her re-recordings. And one of the pros to taylor swift becoming as massive as she is is that it's kind of led to almost a renaissance of newer younger artists taking more of a hands-on approach to songwriting and actually being more songwriters like in the vein of bruce springsteen carly simon and just carol king and just on and on and two artists right now that i think are really kind of capturing that singer songwriter but taking it with more of a modern edge and incorporating more pop and other inspirations is Olivia Rodrigo and Noah Khan. Olivia Rodrigo has has added a little bit more of the pop rock, uh, pop punk into her music. And then Noah Khan has really kind of taken on, you know, a huge younger following also of his like Americana kind of alt rock inspired things. In fact, at first I was like, who the hell is Noah Khan? And then a few months ago he performed on SNL and I was like, oh, oh, that's okay. Yeah, no, that's awesome. He sounds great. I get it now. I get why he's like my 14 year old niece is a huge fan of him, and I get it now. Like, it's pretty cool. He's got some interesting stuff there. And what's cool is that for um, BBC Radio One Live Lounge, they, whenever they have an artist come on and perform on that show over in the UK, they have them do a cover of a song. So Olivia Rodrigo actually covered Noah Khan's big breakout hit, Stick Season, while Khan, while he was on the show, recorded a rendition of Lacey from Rodrigo's recently released sophomore album, Guts. So they decided, you know what? We've wanted to collaborate for a while. Until we finally get to be in the studio together, let's do a special record store release day and release our covers on a seven-inch color vinyl. 
So here you are getting to see two of arguably today's most well-rounded singer-songwriters covering each other and paying tribute to each other. So that's my third pick. Olivia Rodrigo and Noah Kahn's covers of each other's songs, Stick Season and Lacey. So that's my three. Recap, GBI, their cover of Bad Brains, the Regulator, Paramore and David Byrne covering each other's songs, Burning Down a House and Hard Times, and Olivia Rodrigo and Noah Kahn covering each other's songs, Stick Seasons and Lacey. So now before we go into a debate over which of the cooler releases, Matt, you mentioned that you had a dozen releases that you wanted to pit into your third pick, or am I exaggerating on that number? Well, yeah, a little, but there's also some <coughs> other things that I kind of want to call out that are also very interesting as well that just didn't make the cut here. So 90s on vinyl for the first time. So like I said, a lot of artists this year that I've always kind of been curious about, like listening to on vinyl um, and making it come quote unquote more alive with the way that vinyl reproduces sound. I think the Cranberries and the Bury the Hatchet album, I think that would lend itself very well. Filter, they're releasing the very best things uh, best of album. And one of, I think a lot of people consider him to be a, uh, like a one hit wonder of the nineties and Duncan Sheik. Um, his self-titled album is actually a pretty good album. And I think that, you know, that would sound amazing on vinyl as well. A couple of head scratchers though, that I kind of found too, while I was perusing through the list this year, Zach, do you remember a one-off supergroup called Tinted Windows? Do I? I do not, actually. Actually, wait, maybe I do. They were like from the two... Uh, I, I feel like I actually learned them recently. It didn't it involve James Eha and some other yep. surprising names? So it's James Eha of the Smashing Pumpkins, Taylor Hansen of Hansen, That's right, Adam, yes. Adam Schlesinger of Fountains of Wayne, and Bunny Carlos from Cheap Trick. A hell and they, of a combo. It is. It sounds weird, but if you almost kind of imagine like a power pop clash sounding album, it's like on the simpler side. That's essentially what they are. And they didn't do very much. They released one album, but that's the album that they're putting out this year. So it's very interesting that they're uh, that they're doing that. Now of all times, like I fi you figure when Adam Schlesinger died back in uh, in COVID that they might have done something there, but they didn't. And uh, but they're choosing to do it this year. So um, if that sounds at all interesting, that might be something worth picking up. And then another band and project that I never thought I'd hear the light of day from again. Do you remember Dead by Sunrise? That also sounds very familiar, but please explain so they're a band that was fronted by Chester from Lincoln Park. Uh huh. Didn't they come and, back with Chester's son for a short period of time? Yeah, yeah. And that that was making waves shortly after Chester passed away. Um, but also Ryan and Amir from Orgy uh, were in the band as well, and it was a very limited release in Europe. So this is going to be the first time that they released the album on vinyl in North America on a black ice vinyl. And the original album is also going to include a new track called morning after, which was originally a Japan only song. Uh, there's also going to be five unreleased acoustic songs that they performed in Vegas on here too. So that's also going to be limited to uh, 7,500. So once again, if you're a fan of Chester and you kind of want to pick up all the things that he did, uh, that's another interesting release. Is that why that member from Orgy kind of some like, you know, someone spoke out of term and said in an interview that um, he heard Lincoln Park was rehearsing with a female singer to potentially reform the group? Or is that just a coincidence? I think it might have been a coincidence. I don't think that it, one had anything to do with the other. Or maybe he was just like pr doing an interview to promote it. Possibly. That came up. I don't know. So the only one. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, so yeah, some, some other just really interesting things coming off the list this year, you know, just an example of things that make you kind of go, huh, why now? Hmm. Honestly, the only honorable mention I 
want to call out is um so you know they release soundtracks and comedy albums on vinyl too and of course they're releasing a new version of cheech and chung's up in smoke on vinyl this time it's on smoky green vinyl and normally i'd be like okay whatever like i don't know how many times this has been re-released but you also have to do a little giggle because they're releasing this on April 20th. <laughs> 420. Yep. I'm like, okay, that's perfect. Like, you know, you, yeah, you, you almost are obl- like obliged to buy it if you're actually at a record store on 420. You just have to. Actually, you know what? It's funny you say that, and I completely forgot about this, but you saying Cheech and Chong just reminded me because Towley is on the cover of the South Park 25th anniversary concert album. And that's coming out on record store oh, day too. That's I forgot about that. So and, and that's also perfect that Tally is on there. On yeah, it's pressed on it's pressed on Towley blue vinyl. Oh, that's and pretty awesome. If you don't know what this is, so for the 25th anniversary of South Park, um Trey Park and Matt Stone, they got together with um Primus and ween and they did this whole big concert and uh they did a lot of the songs from south park but i don't know how much of this was known ahead of time but um the two surviving members of rush actually joined them on stage because they were huge rush fans and the the guys from rush were worked into um some south park episodes and they performed closer to the heart and a couple of other songs, and it it was just a it was a spectacle to see. So I mean, as for, for as silly as South Park is, it was really cool. So if I understand the story correctly, I actually believe it was a surprise to Trey because Trey is the one who was a really yes. big, like so literally like Matt and Primus and Mean rehearsed with the members of Rush uh, secretly, and then Trey didn't find out until on stage until they showed a, the uh, animated version of Rush like trash talking the creators and then yep. suddenly getty and alex show up on stage with instruments and that's when trey was like wait am i about to play with rush like so it was a complete surprise to him and what's even which is also really crazy because a lot of people will, t- will look at the taylor hawkins tribute concert as uh the first time uh getty and alex played since neil pert's death but actually it was the south park concert that yep. marked the first time that Getty and Alex performed together, which is kind of batty <laughs> in the it's, best way possible that it was actually South Park that brought Getty yeah. and Alex back to on stage together after years of not playing because they lost Neil. Um, we can thank South Park for that. That's actually insane. The more I say that out loud. Insane. So yeah, just another, uh, Another little gem to find on Record Store Day. It's amazing that South Park always manages to release something on Record Store Day. Well, listen, our video unboxing of the South Park bigger, larger, uncut, like the the movie soundtrack of that vinyl, like that anniversary vinyl, is still one of our highest viewed videos on YouTube. It's insane. And if you haven't watched it yet, make sure you go watch it on YouTube it's at Epic Footnote. So Matt, it's time for us. To Everything discuss. makes a list. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we all win. It's record store day. Um, I'll definitely give you the Beatles three inch vinyl collection because that's, I mean, they've done. Yeah. As you mentioned, they have done that numerous years, but it's actually even cooler that they're doing it this year with those songs, given the history connection to, it being the anniversary of Ed Sullivan performance. Like that's insane. I hate saying that out loud that that was 60 years ago. Holy cow. So and it's I'll got give... Bluetooth and Bluetooth. Everything's better with everything's better with Bluetooth. <laughs> so I'll give you that. So that would be one. <clears throat> I feel like we have to do the Grohl, Benante Ian one. Yep. I'm shocked. I'm actually a little surprised you didn't pick that. I thought you might call that out. But that's just A, it's done for a great cause. There's also cool etching on the other side of the vinyl and 
plus like Grawl and two members of Anthrax. Come on, no brainer. So that's yep. the second pick. And then third pick, I'm not really sure. We could always go with the tie because it includes the new one from Pearl Jam. <laughs> I, I don't want to include the new one from Pearl Jam okay. because I don't know what that sounds like yet, even though the title track is amazing. You know, somebody smart just said that. What, the title track? No. It, the, that uh, you haven't listened that to? We don't know what, that we don't know what the new one from yeah, Pearl Jam I'm sounds like. I'm <laughs> explaining why I am not allowing that to be yeah. in the final three. Out of curiosity, is there between my two, last two, was there one that piqued your interest or nah? Um, I mean, the only one that remotely piques my interest is the the Paramore Talking Heads. Not like you know huge what? fans of either one of them, but I would actually. So here's a crazy idea. Uh oh. Let's make the third pick. South Park, twenty fifth anniversary concert on vinyl. Don't Italian forget to bring edition. a towel. I, you know what? I kind of, A, forgot that that was going out this year. And B, the more we talk about not just the release itself, but also like the history that that recording captures. Yep. Kind of feel like we just both talked ourselves into making that the third pick. There we go. Boom. Done and done. Repeat the three then. Say it out loud, Matt. Shout it out. Shout it. No, no kiss. No, no kiss. No kiss. Lots of reasons why we can't. We can't <laughs> right. afford it. We've talked about them too much already. So the three picks that we have for Record Store Day 2024 is the Beatles with the three-inch record player and vinyl, uh, the four three-inch vinyls that are it's in the little case, a cover of Bad Brains, the regulator from Grohl, Benate, and Ian, and the South Park 25th anniversary concert featuring, of course, Trey Parker, Matt Stone, Primus Ween, and... The two members, Alex Leipzig, Getty Lee of Rush, joining them on stage on Tally Blue Vinyl. Yes, no, we got to we got to mention that. So there you have it. Those are our three picks. Those are what we consider to be the coolest releases coming out on Record Store Day 2024. Do you agree with our picks? Do you think we're crazy for forgetting a piece of vinyl that we should be mentioning? What album title special release are you going to be waiting in line at your favorite record store this year to pick up? Which one are you the most anxious for? Tell us on Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter, Threads, if you're still on there, God bless you, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and subscribe to any of our streaming platforms, including YouTube, at Epic Footnote. We really appreciate you listening to all these episodes of ours, and we also really appreciate Lucky 13 Beard Co. If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you check out Lucky 13, the number beardco.com because they've got some of the finest beard bombs and oils on the internet today. They smell fantastic. They're going to make you feel epic. And if you want to take that epicness to another level, we have our own beard oil with them. It's called the Lemmy. It's tribute to Lemmy from Motorhead. It smells of bourbon, tobacco, cola, and leather. If that is right up your alley, throw it in your cart. And also, while you're there, use the code EFP10 at checkout, not just for hours, but for anything you put in your cart and you get 10% off of your entire order using the code EFP10 at checkout, Lucky13, the number beardco.com. And remember, if you go to our Linktree page that you can find on any of the bios of our social media pages, you can find t-shirts, hats, coffee mugs, hoodies with our cool little logo on it. It's a great way to help us continue to do episodes like this, as well as let your friends know you like to listen to Matt and Zach talk about vinyl. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you join us for another episode real, real soon. Don't forget to bring a towel.